My name is Herb Behrens. I'm a volunteer at the National Steinbeck Center. And I want to talk a little bit about John Steinbeck in the Monterey Peninsula. John Steinbeck, very early in his life, had a relationship with the Monterey Peninsula, particularly Pacific Grove, where his family had a, had a home at 147 11th Street. And it's still in the Steinbeck name. His father had built this home, and he and his and John Steinbeck and his family would come here on the summers. And he, it was there that he probably was introduced to Monterey Bay and the ocean and the tide pools and things like that, which was always part of his life. John Steinbeck had, and when he was living here for a while, had a boat. He had a boat when he lived in Pacific Grove, as I said, and he had a boat when he lived in Long Island, Sag Harbor, his last months of his life. When he was going to Stanford of between 1919 and 1925. He would commute between Palo Alto, Stanford, and Salinas, and sometimes stop off at the family home in Pacific Grove. When he left Stanford without a degree, why he had met, or he had gone to New York, he met coming back from New York, which had been a disaster for him because he couldn't publish his work and he couldn't, maintain, he couldn't uh, get uh, much work there. Why, he came back and he worked in a fish hatchery in the Tahoe area, Lake Tahoe area. It was there that he met a young lady and her sister by the name of Carol and Idell Henning. And Carol Henning would become his first wife. When they married in 1930, they moved into the Pacific Grove house. And it was there that John Steinbeck began to do his serious writing. He began and wrote to a God unknown, Cup of Gold, Long Valley, the Red Pony. He struggled for a long, long time as a writer. Fortunately, it was the Depression, so he didn't have to live on a great deal. His father helped him with $25 a month, which at that time was a good enough salary. Carroll worked in part-time jobs. He did sell a few of his short stories, but it wasn't until his book, Tortilla Flat, was published that he began to be recognized. And being recognized was something that John Steinbeck did not like. He would not have made a good person to be interviewed. He did not want to talk about himself. He wanted to talk about his writing. And so he was a a person that was uncomfortable with people coming up to him. After Tortilla Flat was, was published and people began to realize that their author, John Steinbeck, was living there, people would come down 11th Street and peer over the fence at him. And he, for a variety of reasons, decided he had to get out. And eventually they moved to Los Gatos. Before he did, he was in the process of writing one of his better books of Mice and Men. He, Almost completed it there. He finished up the last portion of it when he was in Los Gatos. And when it was in Los Gatos, he was also the one where he also had started working on what eventually became the Grapes of Wrath. But in the Pacific Grove Cottage, he had interviewed several people in the union business, people who were interested in unionizing many of the workers in the area. And it was from these interviews that his book, In Dubious Battle, was was done. After Los Gatos and after his success with Grapes of Wrath, why his marriage to Carol deteriorated and they separated, he met a young lady in Hollywood. They married. It was Gwen Congor. They went to New York and lived for a while there. They had two sons. He came back to the Pacific Grove house for a while after their marriage, but before that, he had come to Monterey. There was a house on Pierce Street in Monterey that he always admired. It, uh, it was uh, the Laura Soda Adobe. And he came here in the fall of 1944 when he was working on a book set in Mexico called The Pearl. 
and he wrote the pearl here and he then from here went down to to Mexico to see the film being made for it. He left the Monterey area in about 19, early part of 1945 and did not return to stay at any time. He did visit a couple of times. His sisters were in Watsonville, but he did come, interestingly enough, when he was traveling with his, his friend uh, Charlie, on his travels with Charlie trip. Uh, he came down from Seattle down to San Francisco, and from San Francisco he came into to Cannery Row and to, stayed somewhat sometimes at the, at the Pacific Grove house. He left Pacific, Pacific Grove and went through Salinas and the Fremont Peak. If you've ever read the book, you know he sees portion of his past from, from the Fremont Peak, and he tells Charlie about it. But um, he did come at another time in 1955, I think it was, for a political convention that he covered, the Republican convention at the, the Cow Palace. And it's possible that he came down, if not to, 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 uh, to, Pacific, Gro or to Pacific Grove or to Cannery Row area, but at least to Watsonville where his sisters were. I think he probably felt that going back to Pacific Grove and to, particularly to Cannery Row was something he did not want to do. Elaine tells a story when, when he met her in San Francisco and she came down with him on the Travels with Charlie trip. She wanted to see Cannery Row. She wanted to see the lab. She wanted to see all the things that it, John had written about, the Elida Cafe and the, and the Lone Star and the things like that. John didn't want to get out of the car. He, he, had done, he had done that, so to speak. That's not only the way he felt about Cannery Row, but the way he felt about a lot of his writing. In other words, he, he has said in some of his, his uh, letters that once he finishes a book, that's it. He's finished with it. Now, he didn't do, he only has done one sequel, and that was Sweet Thursday to Cannery Row. He never has done a sequel to any of his other books, although some of his other themes have been gone on to different books. So I think once he, once he met Elaine, Elaine was his third wife, and he was living in Pacific Grove, the 11th Street Cottage, while he was recovering from the disaster of his uh, divorce with from Gwen. Now I say it was a disaster because when Ed Ricketts died in 1948, he came here for the funeral and he went back to New York and not only had his good friend died, but Gwen asked him for a divorce. She said he had stifled her growth as a professional singer, for example. So he left there. She took care of the two boys, um, Tom and Johnny. And he came back to Pacific Grove Cottage. And it was there that he wrote some of his most vitriolic letters about how he hated women. Well, that soon passed once he met Elaine. He had been dating several movie stars. One of them was Ann Southern. He had written to Ann Southern in Hollywood when he was in Pacific Grove and asked her if she would come down to visit him in Pacific Grove. And she said, sure, if I could bring somebody with him. And he agreed. And the woman that she brought with him was Elaine Scott. At that time, Elaine Anderson, who was a Texas lady, had been married to a movie actor, Zachary Scott, and they had a child, Waverly. Well, it's interesting, Ann Southern tells a story that once John Steinbeck and Elaine Scott met, they just really didn't talk with Ann Southern very much. They were very smitten with each other. The letters that John has written to Elaine that are collected in Steinbeck, A Life and Letters, are just delightful. He's a very clever, romantic, flirtatious, intellectual, creative man. And it's delightful to read those letters. They fall in love and they are married in 1950. And he, except for the times with Char Travel with Charlie Tripp and the political convention, does not return to Monterey. He's done that in a sense. He's, he's, the house has been, been, uh, been given to other members of the, uh, of the family and he's no longer He's no longer interested in it for a lot of reasons. And in fact, when he was here at uh, the Laura Soto Adobe, he makes a statement that 
this is not my home again, and he refers to Thomas Wolfe's famous title, You Can't Go Home Again, because he finds that, except for Ed Ricketts, the people that he knew when he was here in the 30s, just are not either the same people. Well, I think the problem, it's not a problem, but I think the point of view is that not only are they not the same person, he is not the same person. He is a man who has won the Pulitzer Prize. He is a man who has written a famous book, The Grapes of Wrath, and other, uh, and other books. He is the man who has been to Hollywood and has overseen some of the movies that he's made. And he talks about people uh, to his friends that he had here, about, about things that he has done, and they just don't see him as the same young, struggling writer that they knew in the 1930s. So it's a different person in both John Steinbeck and the people here. He writes eventually about his hometown, of course, and Salinas and the Salinas Valley in his book East of Eden. And interestingly enough, he comes back to Monterey to stay and to do some research in Salinas. So Pacific Grove and the Cannery Row and the Sweet Thursday and the Tortilla Flat books that come out of here are that part of his story. And then he's on to New York. He's on to traveling to Europe. He's on to, to doing a lot of traveling in, in Paris and in England. And he's, he, he does a lot of traveling at that time. He's living in New York. He's living at, uh, in a high rise, 35th floor of a high rise building, a far cry from the small town of Salinas or Pacific Grove. So it's interesting to see John Steinbeck, the writer of The Common Man, the writer of The Migrant Workers, who is living in New York, going to 21 Club, who is wearing a cape, who talks about uh, New York as being a great place to live. But yet, he finds a home in Sag Harbor, which is a small town on Long Island. It's on the water. And I think he finds there somewhat of the same kind of atmosphere that he knew or experienced in Pacific Grove. The interesting thing, when he was living there, he wrote his last novel called The Winter of Our Discontent. And the winter of our discontent is set in a small town very much like Sag Harbor. When the television movie was done here with um, Sutherland and some others, why it was set and filmed in Pacific Grove because they felt this was a town that was very much like the town that Ed, or John was writing about in winter of our discontent. So consciously or unconsciously, he was still here, and there is a wonderful idea of Steinbeck country, the idea of not only the towns, Pacific Grove, Monterey, Salinas, but also the whole rich valley that he wrote about. In fact, he wanted to write about it. He said in a letter in 1935, he said, I want to write the story of the, uh, this valley, of the small ranches of the small town, and eventually did, in, called East of Eden. So it was 15, about 15 years later that he eventually wrote it. But it's interesting that this man who was, would write about the people and so often people not only in small towns but also out in the farms, he never wrote about big, he never stories were never about big cities. Now it's true that some of the early, very early stories he wrote when he went to New York in 1925 had to do with with the, with the town, with the city of New York. But he was not a Damon Runyon. He was not a, a Ben Hecht who would write about, about a big city. So I guess all through all his, his life, there was still that person who saw the worth of the, of the small town. And in fact, he told Elaine later in his life, I do not want to be buried on foreign soil, which she took to mean he wanted to be buried in Salinas which he was. He was cremated in New York. Some of his ashes were distributed at Point Lobos, and then his, body, his ashes were buried in March of 1969 in the family plot, the Hamilton plot, in the Garden of Memories in Salinas. So he returns to the Salinas that he wrote about.